Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. It's lovely to have you join us today. Um, we're, we'll start very shortly. We're just waiting for everybody to join us and to come on in, but um, yes, it's great to see you and we'll get going very shortly. Welcome everybody, it's great to see you. Um, we are just waiting for everybody to join us um, and we'll get going very soon within the next couple of minutes. Numbers look like they might stabilise now. Becca, uh, sorry, Tilly, do are we yeah. about there? Ready to go? Go for it. Lovely, thank you. So, um, hello everyone. It's great to see you. I hope you can all see the screen. Okay, and um, pop something in the chat if there's any problems with that. But um, I think it's all working. We have just tested it. Um, uh, yes, lovely to see you. Uh, to this, um, and welcome to this webinar on admissions um, and. Um, international students as well so I believe we do have some international students with us tonight so welcome especially to you. Um, we're going to um, give you a whistle stop tour of our um, admissions processes um, and um, uh, we're, we're going to take it in terms to talk to you, give you lots and lots of information, um, most of which you will also get an open day so if you haven't been to an open day do come along to that because we'll be talking in more detail uh, about everything at open day and it's a really good opportunity for you to get um, all the information you need about Nora and to, uh, and to ask any questions to both staff and students. Um, we do have two lovely students with us tonight, um, uh, Marie and Rihanna, and uh, they will be talking to you shortly about their experiences too. Um, so we'll just get going if that's all right with everyone. Um, first of all, I need to work out how to do that. There we go. Okay, Dan, Dan's just gonna take you through this slide. Thank you, Mandy. Hello, everyone. My name is Dan and I work in the marketing department at Norland. Thank you very much uh, for joining. Um, we do get questions about whether this will be recorded and it will be and we'll send it out in the next couple of days. So if you have to leave for any reason or you want to revisit anything, uh, we will be sending you uh, the recording for that. Um, your camera is off and your microphone is muted. So don't worry if anyone comes in and asks you what you want for your dinner or if your dog starts barking, don't worry, we can't see or hear that. Um, and we want this session to be as interactive as possible. And in a big chunk of the session will be a Q&A at the end. So if you do have any questions, pop it down in the Q&A uh, button at the bottom. Um, we know it's difficult to get to open days, especially with strikes and how expensive things can be, and especially if you're an international student. So um, this is designed to give you the opportunity to find out more about the application process and the admissions process and get those top tips from uh, Rihanna and Marie, who you'll meet later on, as well as our admissions team. Um, and like Mandy said, we have got international students with us today, so a warm welcome to you, uh, whether that's good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Um, some of you may have been to an event before, so uh, a warm welcome to you. And if this is your first, uh, you're very welcome and we hope you enjoy it. So I will now pass over back to Mandy. Thank you, Dan. What did we just say about dogs? There, there goes my puppy. She's very naughty. Anyway, <laughs> uh, just to introduce the people who are um, in the uh, virtual room with us, uh, we have Becca, uh, Rebecca Tidman. I don't know if you just give a wave, Becca. Uh, Becca is our admissions manager. Some of you may already have been in touch with Becca through the admissions email um, uh, uh, email address, uh, but there you, there you go. You've got a face to a name now. Um, we also have Sue Murphy, who's not with us tonight, but she is uh, our other admissions manager. So you will definitely be in touch with one or the other. I'm just gonna shut the door to make sure the dogs don't bark again. And then you have me, which is a, that's a terrible photograph, but never mind. Um, I'm the vice principal, head of quality and standards and registrar. And admissions is within my department. So that's why I'm here, but I'm responsible for the quality and standards of the courses at Norland. Um, and as you can see on the screen, various other teams as well. Um, and alongside the admissions manager, managers, I'm one of the ones that makes the decisions. So um, uh, now you know who I am as well. 
And without further ado, because you probably don't want to hear from the staff, you'd much rather hear from our lovely students. I'm going to hand straight over to Marie, who's going to talk to you about her experiences. Hi, everyone. I'm Marie. I'm an international visa student from Germany originally. Um, I come from a really big family with three sisters and many animals all around. Um, and I moved here last year to start my study, so I'm now a second year. Uh, before I came to New Orleans, I completed my A-levels in Germany uh, in 2017, so a while ago now. Um, I then moved to the US to be an au pair for a year and was an au pair for two very lovely children um, who are still very, I'm very fond of. Um, then I came back home and worked at a nursery and a health resort, which gave me amazing experience with children of all ages and then also children with sense so special educational needs and disabilities. Um, after that, I started studying to become a secondary school teacher in, with the subject biology and English. I quickly realized I wanted the little ones in my life a bit more instead of the older ones. Um, so I applied to New Orleans and since 20, September 2021, I'm here now and have been loving it. Um, and New Orleans within one year gave me so many great experiences and opportunities. Um, and through New Orleans, I also found a summer job this summer um, in the US for another six weeks and I've been loving it. Hi guys, I'm Rihanna. I'm in set 45 like Marie. I am a bilingual speaker. I was born and raised in Spain. Had to move unfortunately due to the job crisis, but with um, the unfortunate thing happening, I actually got to go to Norland. So I think if I didn't end up coming to England, I probably wouldn't be here. Um, you can go on to the next slide, Mandy. Thank you. Um, so when I finished school, I had to redo two years to get my maths and English GCSEs. Um, to accompany them, I did health and social care and travel and tourism, which I was hoping would link into my childcare later on. When I finally got my grades in maths and English, I went into level three childcare in a different um, college. Whilst learning my childcare at the new college, I said to my tutor that I wanted to be a nanny and that I was looking at London, to which she said, have you heard about Norland, um, which I hadn't before. Until then, she let me have a few minutes during lesson time to search about Norland. Um, but before that, I was volunteering in primary schools. My mum's a primary teacher, so every holiday I had from school, I was actually helping. Um, so I've got loads of experience from 2015 till 2021. Um, sorry, I'm saying that a lot. Uh, I've worked in nurseries. I've done private nannying. Um, English and Spanish children and Portuguese. Before applying to Norland, I, um, I was a care worker, as you can see in the picture. I also volunteered for the community emergency response team and I've done all three of my Duke of Edinburgh's. Um, I got a bit bored during COVID-19 and I thought I'd apply for five different universities. I got accepted to all of them, but Norland was the one that I ultimately wanted. Uh, so first year at Norland is not as stressful as you'd expect it to be. Um, obviously, still try to keep up on top of your assignments. Don't quite relax too much. Uh, there are loads of extra curriculums. You've got a sewing club if you want to be on top of it or finish it sooner. There's obviously the library if you want to do your own stuff. There's a book club, uh, CU, Christian Union. And then there's other clubs outside of Norland, um, which obviously you can find out when you join in. Uh, the work opportunity, so we've got a job shop, which can help you find jobs if you do come along and you're wanting to have the extra um, experience. And then obviously open events. I will also be at the open event on the 8th, which will be mentioned later on. Um, there's a few pictures of my first year within Norland and some of the jobs. I'm in choir which is a great way to like get stress out, by the way. Um, what I know so far about second year is you get longer placements, so more experience, more hours. I'm enjoying it at the moment. I'm excited about my new placement. That's all I know for now. Um, but if you have any questions, fire away. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Mandy, you're muted. 
there's always one, isn't there? And it was me today. Um, sorry. Uh, so just thank you to Rihanna, thank you to Marie, um, two of our wonderful students. Um, as you can see, you know, quite often people think coming to Norland you have to be some superstar student who is um, absolutely incredible. And I would say all of our students are like that, but actually they are quite normal people. So don't sit there. If you're thinking and you've got a bit of imp imposter syndrome, if you like, and you're thinking, oh, I'm not good enough or they're far too posh for me or, I, you know, they're all going to be so much better than me. It's not true. Everybody, uh, we're, we're all just normal, grounded human beings. And the one thing that we have in common, we're all very different. But the one thing we have in common is that we really love working with young children and we really value our role in their development and learning and we understand and recognize that being a nanny is probably the most hands-on intimate way of uh, supporting uh, young children and their families um, and um, and I suppose the other thing we have in common is uh, we're really looking forward to the wonderful job opportunities that are available to our graduates. Anyway, a bit more about the course. I'm sure you've done lots of research on the website. Um, and the very exciting news that you will have seen on the website is that we have a brand new degree and diploma coming from um, September 2023. The reason we've done, uh, we've got a new course is not because the old course is no good because the old course is gold standard, but as part of our usual uh, review of, of our programmes, um, we tweak course, the course year on year, every year we've done that since we wrote the course. Um, and we just got to the point where we realised we'd actually tweaked it so much that let's just repackage it, rebrand it and call it uh, and have a, a new title for it. So if you come to Norland from 2023, you'll be studying for the BA Ons in Early Childhood Education and Care. You'll still cover all the really, really important things that you need to know to be able to work with young children and their families. Um, you will also, through the new diploma, still cover all of the things that you need to be able to do when you work with young children and babies and their families. Um, we just repackaged everything. So you've got this, uh, so, it, so it's a brand new course. Um, this is something new that happens. So this is something that happens at every single university, periodically reviewing the quali qualifications and courses. Now we're just in the middle of getting it approved. So it takes quite a long time. We have to write the whole degree um, and then it has to be um, reviewed by other academics and other institutions institutions just to make sure that it's at the right level and that a degree at Norland is as in, as valuable and as rigorous as a degree elsewhere just because we don't currently have the word university in our title doesn't mean that our degree is any less valid than a degree elsewhere so we go through a very rigorous process to make sure that we are not shortchanging every anybody we're not making you work too hard and we're not making it too easy. It's at the right level for a degree. So you can find out information about, our, about this on your, our website. We will update it as the um, approval process goes on and we'll put more and more information about the new course on there. So do keep have a look, having a look. And if you sign up to our mailing list, you'll know straight away when things are updated. So do do that too. You can have a look on the website and find how to sign up to the mailing list. So I'm going to hand over to Rebecca now, and she's going to talk to you a bit more about the admissions process. Hello. Um, so uh, the admissions oversee all of um, the applications. If you're applying as an international applicant, you will also liaise with Claire Hutton, our um, international student manager. Um, but you'll liaise with her over things like your CAS and your visa, but your application will still be overseen by the admissions department. Um, we process your application um, and assist you right through to enrolment. Um, we also process um, all your DBS applications. If you're applying from overseas, you will also need to provide a police report or a certificate of good conduct from the country that you've been living in, um, as well as completing your DBS. Um, so how do we help? We help in lots of ways, um, right off from your inquiries um, through to um, making you an offer. And we can help with answering questions about entry requirements. Um, if you're unsure about 
what sort of experience you need to get if you've got queries about your interview and things like that then we are just here at the end of the phone or at the end of the email um, and we can hopefully answer any of your questions um, once if you're offered a plat um, if you're offered a place at Norland um, we will also send you your offer pack um, and all of your enrollment um, sort of information leading up to that information on your uniform um, your a reading list accommodation um, and things like that uh, we also um, arrange your accommodation um, and place you in the houses that you will if you if you require it of course um, and leading on to accommodation uh, Norland does not have its own halls of residence um, but if you would like Norland to find accommodation for you, then we have really good relationships with um, quite a few landlords in Bath and we secure student houses for you and we can place you in there. You would be housed only with first year Norlin students. You wouldn't be placed with students from University of Bath or anything like that. So you would just be with Norlin students. Um, we have found that it really helps students if they do take up the accommodation in building relationships, settling into student life and things like that. Um, you know, it can help with friendships um, and, you know, when you've got deadlines and things like that, you're kind of all in it together. Um, so it's definitely... I think it's definitely something to consider. Um, the cost of accommodation, unfortunately, Bath isn't the cheapest place to live. Um, we can't give an exact figure for next year at the moment, um, as most <coughs> some of you in the UK may realise that um, property prices can change. But we um, predict that it's going to be within the range of about six to seven hundred pounds per calendar month, and this won't include bills. Over to Claire. Hello, so my name is Claire Hutton and as you can see from my long job title, I'm the Student Records Data and International Student Manager and that last bit is the bit that you'll need to know about. Um, so I joined Norland in October 2019, um, before that I worked as a registrar at an English language school and there we welcomed students from all over the world and most of them needed visas and it was my job there to oversee our sponsor licence because you have to have a licence to welcome students with visas as I'll tell you a bit more about in a minute. And so I know all sorts of very interesting visa student legislation that will hopefully be helpful to you. Next slide, please. OK, so a little bit about Norland's um, visa history. So as you can probably um, see, we are quite a new visa sponsor. And essentially, we got a visa sponsor license because of Brexit. So when Brexit happened, the rules changed. Um, prior to Brexit, Norland could welcome EU students and UK students, of course. Um, but after Brexit, the rules changed and it meant that basically anyone coming from outside of the UK or Ireland would need a visa to come and study within the UK. So, of course, we didn't want to miss the opportunity to welcome all you lovely international students. So we got our visa student sponsored license and welcomed our first visa student, Marie, last year. <laughs> and of course, that's been a great success. Um, so part of my role at Norland is, um, as you can imagine, having a sponsor license means there are lots of responsibilities and rules we need to stick to as an institution and to support you. Um, so part of my job is making sure we stick to those rules and regulations. And I'm also here to make sure um, that any students who need to apply for a visa get the support they need. I'm here to answer any questions you have and to help you through the process of all that lovely extra paperwork you would have to do if you are applying for a visa, I'm afraid. Um, next slide, please. OK, some key facts. Now, um, as Becca briefly mentioned, um, before you even get to the stage where we're thinking about visa paperwork, um, you need to make sure that Norland is right for you and that um, you're right for Norland. So admissions will be your first port of call there. If you don't have any UK qualifications, that's OK. Our admissions team can check and make sure that you have equivalent qualifications so you meet the needs required by the course. And um, the best way to do that is to email the admissions team. That's really helpful for them. If you can send in your qualifications that you have by email, they can then check and make sure that they um, are relevant to apply to Norland. Um, you do need one additional qualification, though, and that is a CELT. That's a secure English language test. Um, the CELT type we accept is UK, um, it's IELTS for UK VI, academic. 
Um, you've probably heard for about IELTS tests, they're quite a well-known language test, but we need a specific one called IELTS for UKVI academics. So when we do get to that point where you're thinking of booking your CELT, get in touch with me before you do, and I can make sure you're just booking the right one there and help you through that process. Okay, so next slide. Claire, Claire, before I go to the next slide, can I just mention yes, that yes. if you are a native English speaker and an international student, you do yes, not of need course. To have the English language. Yes, yes, UK, but I do have some funny rules, but luckily they are quite sensible in that regard. So if you do come from a country where English is your first language, you will not need us out. <laughs> do not worry. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, New Orleans is quite a new visa sponsor, a student visa sponsor. So this means we're kind of um, on probation with the UKVI. They need to make sure that we're being a rigorous and proper sponsor. So for the next four years, we have to build what's called a track record of compliance with UKVI. And whilst we're doing that, that does mean there are some restrictions on things you can do here in the UK with your student visa. This does mean you'll not be able to work in the UK, I'm afraid. Um, this does include voluntary work if you have a student visa. But um, as Marie explained, she did some vacation work in America. You can work in, you can go back to your home country and work during vacation time. And you can work in other countries where you have, you are allowed to do so. Um, so it's just not in the UK, you won't be allowed to work. So that is something important to bear in mind. Um, work placements are allowed and of course a crucial part of your course at Norland, but they do have to be um, slightly adapted um, to fit in with some rules. So you're only allowed to spend up to 33% of your time um, on work placements and um, of course you usually spend around 40. So we have made some adaptations there. You will need to complete part of your placements four weeks um, before you join Norland in a placement setting. And then we've also adapted it slightly so you have to spend some time in a virtual placement whilst you're here, just so we can make sure you stay within those limits. But the place, the virtual placements are excellent and we'll make sure you get everything you need out of that placement experience. So don't worry, you're certainly not missing out on anything in that regard there. There are also, of course, some additional costs you need to bear in mind. It costs money to apply for a visa. Um, it costs, currently costs £363 and you will also have to pay um, the healthcare surcharge, which is £470 a year. But this does mean that you can use the NHS as, as I can. So you can get GP appointments, you can use hospital treatment for free. Um, dentist appointments aren't free, but that's the case for UK residents as well, I'm afraid. You do have to pay for those, but otherwise it does, it does represent great value for money, I think. Um, there's also just some links there to some really useful, some useful information. The government website is, of course, um, should be your primary source of visa information after me. Um, UK Caesar is also a really good resource and Norland on our website, we have some really great information there for you too. Okay. I think that's my slides for now. Thank you. So back to me for the bad news, I'm afraid. It does cost money to come to Norland. Um, we are what's known as a small and specialist institution, which means we're in a particular category of higher education institutions and universities. And there are different rules that apply to us than there are to anyone else. Um, so because we spend, because we charge fees above the £9,000 limit um, that our other institutions charge, uh, our students or our applicants are only allowed um, a student loan of around £6,165. So that does leave, in fact, there is, is, is um, yeah, 6,000, yeah, 6,100, 600, 100, 6 ,165 pounds, sorry. Um, so that does leave a shortfall, as you can see, um, of around um, £9,000 for um, home students and a great, uh, and obviously if you're an international student, you can't apply for student loans at all anyway, uh, not the UK student loans anyway. So why do we pay, why do we charge extra um, above anyone else? It's because you're doing two courses at Norland. You're doing the degree, but you're also doing the Norland diploma. And just to reassure you, we, what we spend those fees on is, is completely the, your course. It's, it's no more and no less. We don't have big shareholders. We don't pay huge salaries to anybody, unfortunately, they will say. Um, but uh, everything, what we charge is what your course costs. And that's why it's such high quality. So we can't get away from the fact that there are big fees to pay. Um, and we try to be as upfront and honest about that as we possibly can. And I would ask you to think really, really carefully about how you will fund that course. 
Can you just bear with me one moment because the dog is now whining because he's managed to get himself stuck in the, in the room. Hold on a minute. Never work with children and animals. Actually, children are much better behaved than animals, I find. Anyway, on to carry on with the fees. So for 2023-24, our fees for UK students are £15,740 per year for that first year. There is an additional um, lifelong learning fee of £315, which is paid once in your first term and then never again. So that brings your total fees for the first year if you are a UK student to £16,055. If you are an international student, there are higher charges because um, you, I'm afraid that your fees also have to pay for the services of Claire and all the support that you will get in terms of um, your visa, both before and throughout your time at Norland. So fees for international students are £17,850. You will also pay the lifelong learning fee of £315, which means in total your first year's fees are £18,165. Now you can pay those fees in varying different ways. You can pay them in one go, one lump sum if you want to. You can pay them termly and you can see the breakdown there of what the term, terms fees would be. Um, you can also pay them by direct debit over um, nine months. Uh, and so you will pay an equal amount over nine months um, and, and that would and it will it, it's, it's not interest bearing. So it will equal exactly the same amount as it would be if you paid them in one lump sum. Fees do go up each year. Generally, we try not to put them up by too much, but obviously costs go up. And so unfortunately, because, as I've said, the only income we have are the fees. The fees have to go up all accordingly to meet the, the growing costs. We, we um, guarantee that we won't put fees up by more than 5% each year or by the consumer price index if that is higher each year. So we do cap the amount that they go up. Um, but unfortunately, it's, it's a fact of life, isn't it? Things do go up, unfortunately. Um, on top of your fees, there are some additional costs that you have to bear in mind. Um, the uniform. Now, the uniform is not optional. Uh, you can choose which type, which, which bits of the uniform you want to wear, whether you want to wear a dress option or whether you want to wear a trousers option, but you do have to wear the uniform. And we reckon that that will cost you around about £1,000 over the three years that you're with us. Um, if you look after your uniform carefully, you won't have to, for example, buy more than one jacket as long as you stay the same shape and size, which I find very difficult each year, year unfortunately. Um, and uh, but you may want to replace the old polo shirt or jumper if, if um, you know, they, they get worn quite quite quickly. So around about a thousand pounds in total. Uh, Becca's already spoken to you about the accommodation. We think that's going to be between 600 and 700 pounds plus bills. And then um, you will also become a member of the Professional Association of Norlanders. And this is uh, this is a new association that is just being set up right now to protect the standards um, of Norlin nannies going forward and to give some assurances to employers uh, um, uh, about the fact that you are up to date and that you have your first aid certificate and all that sort of thing. So you'll find out more about that um, and you won't pay, uh, you'll be a student member as soon as you join. So you will be an automatic member with no extra cost. And then once you start your newly qualified nanny year, that's when you'll start paying the, the fee, which is um, around about £100 a year. So just a, just a word about those fees again. Um, they, we we recognise that they are high, that, that it costs a lot of money to come to Norland. The rewards for coming to Norland, we, we think make that cost worth it, but we do understand that it's difficult for you to find that money up front. Um, oh, this is, have I just said all of this? I think I just said all this before we actually get there. Um, so as, 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 just, to re, just to recap, you can, if you're a UK-based student, a home student, you can apply for a student loan through the student finance company of £1,165 per year. Um, you, um, th these, you can also apply for a maintenance loan. So you are, those are available to all students anyway. 
uh, all UK based students. Um, and um, you can go on to the gov.uk forward slash student finance website and you can put in your figures and they will tell you exactly how much you will be eligible for um, if you were to come to Norland. Um, there's a certain point of the year where they open up the portal for actual applications. So if you're thinking of applying in 2023, just wait to hear from us and we'll let you know when the portal is open on the student finance company's website for you to um, apply. Um, as I've already said, unfortunately, um, international students are not able to access the student financing, um, uh, but the instalment options are available to all students. So whether you are a, um, an international student or not, you can pay, pay by direct debit um, in instalments if you wish to. And you can see in that at the table at the bottom there, um, the, the figures not in brackets are what UK students would um, pay. So, for example, you can see in term one, UK students would pay £1,340 for the first three months. And international students would pay £2,088 a month for the first three months. And you can see the other figures there. <coughs> uh, now, there it is. Actually, just before I move on to that, I just want to say one other thing about the fees and finance. As I said, we recognise that it that they it, it is tricky to find um, the uh, the money to come to Norland. Um, we do offer some bursaries, um, and you can have a look on the website to find out uh, the eligibility criteria and what you could apply for as uh, for a bursary. And you can apply as both UK and an international student. But a word a, a word of caution. We have a lot of applications for bursaries every year and we have a limited pot because we actually use we don't use student fees for bursaries. We use the income that we get from our employment agency and our commercial activities to fund bursaries. And there is a limit to to the, the, that amount. So we cannot give bursaries to everybody who applies. So by all means, apply. But to have a think about a plan B. Think about what you will do if you don't get the bursary or if you don't get a full bursary, um, because it's absolutely heartbreaking each year when we end up having to say no to some people who have applied for a bursary and they say, but I have no other means of coming. So think very carefully about um, about whether you can afford the fees if you only if you only achieve, uh, receive a part bursary or. Um, or no bursary at all. Again, have a look at, at the website at the eligibility criteria because that will give you an idea about whether you will or not uh, be able to, um, whether you're likely or not to be successful in your application. But we do have very limited pot and particularly very limited full bursary pot. So I just want you to have a really careful think about that before you um, set your heart on something that might be out of reach. Anyway, let's brighten up things a little bit, shall we? And think about how you would apply. Um, so we have entry requirements and you do have to have a minimum of 96 UCAS points. That's the equivalent of three C's at A level or an overall C in, um, uh, sorry, an overall MMM in the uh, Pearson um, Extended Diplomas. Uh, there are various different Pearson courses and various different cash courses. Uh, so I can't go through all of the all of the different um, combinations, uh, but it, just remember the 96 UCAS points and you can have a look on the UCAS tariff calculator, put in your qualifications or the ones that you're studying or the ones that you have, and you can have a look and see what that is equivalent to. But of course, you can also email our admissions team and they will be very happy to let you know uh, what grades you would need to get to achieve the 96 UCAS points. Or, or what your actual qualifications are that you have. Um, if you're an international student, as Claire has already said, or it may have been Claire or Becca, I think it might have been Becca actually, um, uh, just, send, just send us the email, uh, send a, uh, the email to admissions with the exact title of the uh, qualifications that you have or that you're studying and the grades that you have, and they will be able to let you know what UCAS points those, those are, uh, so you can see whether you're on track. You also have to have five GCSEs or more, um, including English and Maths at grade, so, grade, grade four or grade C as it used to be or above. And as Claire's already said to you, the English um, CELT for visa applications or IELTS academic, um, they, uh, they are mandatory if you are not a native English speaker 
and you have to get a level six across the board um, in order to um, come into Norland. And the reason we, we set it at level six is because you need to be able to communicate spoken and written English at that level in order to succeed on the course. So how do you apply? You apply via UCAS. Um, and there is a link on our website, but um, it's very easy to find. You can Google UCAS if, if that's what you want to do. And when you go on to UCAS, there's only one Norland. So you can either search for Norland or you can use the institution code and course code there. But there's only one Norland and there's only one course that you can apply for for 2023. Um, and, um, and, and you will find it quite easily. Uh, you do have to fill in quite a lengthy form, and I'm sure um, those of you that are UK based, uh, uh, if you're coming for 2023, your schools and colleges will probably already have started to talk to you about that. It's quite a lengthy form. It, 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 we ask for lots of, well, we don't, UCAS asks for lots of information about you. But the key bit that you need to think about is your personal statement. Your personal statement is what you will use to sell yourselves to us, to tell us why you should have and why you want a place at Norland College. It's lovely to hear that you want to work, uh, that you want to study early years and want work, work with young children, but why Norland? That's what you need to think about. And what we're looking for in your personal statements is that absolute passion and commitment to this as a career, because it is hard work working with young children. I know it looks lovely when you see it in films and, you know, you have this rosy view of children falling slowly and gently to sleep in your arms while you sing lullabies, read stories. And sometimes it's lovely and it is like that, but sometimes it's really not like that. And I have recent personal experience because I've been looking after my grandson for the last couple of days and I'm really, really tired now. <laughs> Because it's very tiring and much. I absolutely adore him. He's nearly two and he's lovely, but he's very hard work. And he was very sad that his mummy and daddy had gone on holiday without him. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, it's just to say that, you know, you need that passion and commitment to work with young children, because that's what will see you through those hard times where you think, gosh, this is really hard. But then you remember that you are a really, really, really important person in that child's life. You are actively influencing who they become. I mean, what greater honour and responsibility is there? What better job is there in the world than to be somebody who is involved in and supporting and developing and forming the personality of a young child? And who knows what that young child might go on to become? They might become, go on to become your boss one day. They might even go on to be the prime minister and set rules all over the country. You never, you just don't know. And, and you are responsible for creating that person. I mean, that's just amazing. So we want to hear that passion and enthusiasm in your personal statement. We can teach you everything you need to know. We can teach you how, how to do the things that you need to be able to do. We can't teach you that passion and commitment. That's got to come from you. So that's what we're looking for, both in your personal statement and when you pop along to us for an interview. Now, we do understand that you probably, just to hedge your bets, you will probably want to apply for more than one university, just in case you're not successful coming to Norland. And that's absolutely fine. We understand that you've got to write a more generic um, UCAS statement. So if you if, if you have to do that, and but you want to still show us that passion and commitment for Norland specifically, we're very happy for you to send in an additional personal statement just to us. So you can, the email address is there, it's our admissions email address, you can create your personal statement that's just bespoke for Norland, and you can send it along to our admissions team, and they'll make sure that it gets attached to your application form, so that when we come to interview you, we've got both, both in personal statements there. So we don't offer any places without an interview. Um, uh, our admissions team will um, liaise with you about interview dates and everything, um, but you will come along to us and you will be, um, you will have a chat, so quite an informal chat with our um, lecture, one of our lecturers. Um, and they'll just kind of explore with you why you want to work with young children, why you want to come to Norland and take you through some interview questions. But it, we try to do it in a very relaxed way because we don't want to see the absolute terrified you. We want to see the relaxed and happy and content you. And we know it's gonna be a bit stressful, but we try to make it as stress-free as we possibly can. 
So you'll have your interview. There'll also be a little task that we ask you to do. And we also invite you to bring any portfolio with you. So you can bring a portfolio that's got um, a record of the work that you've done with children before. So if you've babysat, if you've done work experience, if you've got references uh, from previous employers or work experience, if you've got photographs and you've got permission from the parents to share them with us, anything you want to bring along to show us about how, how wonderful you are with young children, you, you're very welcome to bring that along too. We'd love to see it. Once you've had your interview, hopefully we'll make you an offer. If you have already got your qualifications and got the entry requirements, we'll make you what's known as an unconditional offer. And that means the place is yours. We won't withdraw it. We won't think, oh, we'll wait and see if something better comes along. Once we've offered you that place, that place is yours and we, you will be joining us in September. Most, however, most students or most applicants get what's called a conditional offer. And that's because they they're either still studying for their A-levels or their level three qualifications, or they're just doing some top up experiences, or there may be a reason why they don't quite meet the entry requirements. And for international students, it may well be that you haven't yet got your um, English language proficiency test done. Um, so in those cases, you'll get a conditional offer and we'll lay out what the conditions are. So it might say you can have a place at, New at, at Norland as long as you do get your 96 UCAS points or as long as you do pass your IELTS academic. OK, so there'll be a, a, a variety of different conditions there, depending on your own individual circumstances. But again, once we've made that offer to you, if you meet the conditions, the place is yours and you don't have to worry about it. You've got that in the bag. OK. So talked a little bit about the bursary. Um, nor, UCAS have um, uh, what they call an equal consideration deadline which this year is the 25th of January, 2023 at 6 p.m. UK, UK time. Now, what that means is that every application that we receive up to that point, up to six o'clock on the 25th of January, we give equal consideration to. So it doesn't matter if you get your application in at 5.59 on the 25th of January, you still have the same chance as somebody who gets, gets their application in on the 1st of September of getting a place. Having said that, if you get your application in at 6.01 on the 25th of January, we may have already allocated all, all our places. So you may not get an equal chance. We may have just a few places left. And, and so you will not get an equal consideration. So the um, advice to us, uh, to you, is to get your application in as soon as you possibly can. And at least by the 25th of January. And the earlier you get your application in, the earlier you'll have an interview and the earlier you will know whether or not you have been offered a place. So I would say just get your application in as quickly as you can. The bursaries, as I've already mentioned, Emily Ward bursaries, uh, this information is on our website. We have a limited number of, of, of £10,000 bursaries and a limited number of £5,000 bursaries. They are means tested. If you are awarded one, you get one, you get the same bursary each year that you're studying with us. So the first, second and third year. So you don't have to reapply. Um, and we also have a small number of £500 one off uniform bursaries, just some money to help you towards your uniform costs. OK, you have to have an offer before you can apply. Uh, but when we send you your offer, we also send you the bursary application paperwork. So you don't have to request it. It will come to you automatically. But we will be asking for the financial information of your caregivers or you um, so that we can make decisions because they are means tested. And as I said, we always every year have some very worthy cases um, of people who apply. But we but we just can't help them to the extent that they need to, to be helped in order to um, to um, afford the fees. So I'm handing over to Dan now because we've got to the end of our presentation. He's going to manage the next part. Thank you very much, Mandy, and thank you very much, everyone, for your wonderful contributions. So there is a QA and a button at the bottom. We've got some questions already in, so keep them coming. One thing I will say is if you want to ask questions about specific entry requirements, um, I'd recommend just emailing admissions um, or via that email there, and they can um, check your individual requirements for you. Um, so I'll, this question... I'll start off uh, for it to go to Becca, and then I will also ask um, Rihanna because it's kind of um, two angles to it. Um, can you say a little bit about the admissions process for mature students and how a lack of 
uh, entry requirements might be viewed in that case? Um, if you're applying as um, a mature student, which we very much welcome applications from um, mature applicants, um, you may not have all of the entry requirements, um, but if you're aged 21 or over, we do take into consideration your experience um, and your maturity and things like that. So it's, it's something that we can certainly discuss and um, is not necessarily your your application won't be rejected if you don't quite meet the entry requirements what we would usually do um, especially if you've been out of education for a few years you may be required to do an academic task um, and we'll give you something um, to write about and you would have to submit that we usually give these to you um, post interview mm -hmm. Um, so we'll invite you to an interview first, then we'll give you an academic task to complete. But yes, we, we do very much um, welcome mature applicants, so don't be put off at all. Thanks, Becca. And um, Rihanna, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you applied as a mature student, did you? And yeah, I so I turned 21 in January and I applied, well, I, it was on my birthday that the deadline was for to join in September. So um, I didn't find it that stressful. The UCAS does actually help you. If you need help on applying, they've got a section for mature students. Um, I mean, I did have my mum helping me as well, but it was mainly me applying for it and I didn't find it that hard. It was easy, just obviously follow it. And if you are struggling, search on YouTube. There's loads of videos on YouTube about mature students applying for um, UCAS. I will say that um, UCAS are extremely helpful um, and there is an applicant helpline that you can contact if you just go onto the UCAS website. Um, I'm sure you'll find that easily enough and you can give them a call and they can sort of take you through. We do ask our applicants to um, include an academic reference. If you're applying as a mature student, you might not have that um, if you haven't been in um, education for a while but that's fine you could get references for employers and things like that and like I said we'll ask you to complete an academic task so not to worry about that either. Can I just also Dan say it's just worth saying that um, you don't have to be you know our, our, we do have a number of mature students and they're not all in their 20s you know we do have students who are um, older than um, like in their 30s we have actually had student uh, in her 50s I think before there's never too late so if any of the mums or dads are sitting there listening to this presentation, think about this as a career because it's, you know, the job opportunities are amazing. Thank you, everyone. Um, Becca, back to you, because we've had a couple of in, uh, questions about interviews. What type of questions can we expect um, at an interview and what uh, sort of tasks have been done in the past and how would that translate to a virtual interview for maybe an international student? Um, so the the interview questions vary um, and we review the process each year so I don't have exact questions to give you and it would be unfair to give you those anyway um, but they're obviously based around why you want to do chosen um, you know working with children as a career um, thinking about why it is specifically that you've chosen Norland and things like that um, thinking I always um, recommend to people who ask my advice to get as much experience as possible and then think about situations that you've been in and experiences that you've had. So when you're answering the questions, you can back up your answers with, I feel this because there was this one time that, you know, I did this or I taught a child this or, you know, I had this experience and it made me learn various things and it just reconfirms your passion for wanting to do this if you can relate why you are answering the questions with um, experiences that you've had. If you're applying um, as an international and you're not able to get here and have a face-to-face -face off um, interview then we will um, do the interview via Zoom. When you come for a face-to-face -face interview it's made up in two parts at the moment you'd have your face to face and then you also have a task a group task which is in a, um, a small group if you're doing that via zoom we would um, put the two together so you would have your one-to-one -one interview but then you'd still have the opportunity to do a presentation um, which is the same as what you would do in the group task so we make it as close to the face-to-face -face interviews as possible um, so that it's 
um, it's fair across the board. Can Thanks. I just say, sorry, about the task as well? Sorry, I keep interrupting. Um, just to say that the task is nothing that you're going to have to revise for. The task is about what we're trying to test in the task is can you articulate your thoughts and ideas? Can you listen to other people and respond appropriately? Um, can you ask questions and answer questions? So it's, it's really just how you operate in a, in a group. So when it's not going to be anything you can't do. So, it's, you know, so please don't worry. And you do you are informed about what that task is at least two weeks before your interview. So um, you'll have time to prepare as well. So please don't worry too much about it. Thank you. And Marie, can I bring you in here and just ask you what you remember from your interview? Did you have yours um, virtually and how did you find your interview? Yeah, for me, it wasn't only the distance, but I also applied during the high time of COVID. So traveling was not possible. Um, and actually, my interview was with Mandy, the first part. Um, it was really good. So it, for me, it was, I think, still a bit different because I was the only international visa student at that time. So it was just me first with Mandy, another member of the finance team, um, just going through the basics with me. And it was very informal, as Mandy said, and very relaxed. Of course, I was really anxious in the beginning. Um, but as soon as I got to talk to people and realized, oh, those are actually kind people, um, it was it was really good. So um, it is generally every person I talked to was really nice. And then after this little group discussion I had with Mandy and the other member of um, the finance team, I went on to have a one on one interview with um, someone from the support uh, team. Um, and that was really good and also very informal. I felt like everything I said was valid and right. So it, there wasn't it wasn't questions where it was there was a right and wrong answer. It was more about, as Mandy said, my passions and showing that I really wanted this, but also had realistic expectations and didn't think, oh, everything will be easy. I'll get my degree handed and then I go off and earn a bunch of money and not do anything for it. Um, it was making sure that I knew what I was getting into. And um, for international students, it was also being aware of other visa requirements and things like that. Um, but it was really good. I, I didn't mind that it was online. I didn't feel like I had any disadvantage because of it. So I, I think that's fine. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Marie. Um, Mandy, we've got a couple of questions about how many applications on average do, uh, does Northern get per place? It varies every year. Uh, we accept 100 students a year, um, maximum 104 actually. So this year we did take 104 students, but um, we don't have classroom space for any more than that. That's, that's, that's the maximum we can possibly do. Um, this year, I think we had over 150 applications for those 104 places. Um, it has been in the past as high as 230 applications. Um, and it's been as low as 130 applications. So it just varies year on year. Um, um, all I would say is don't allow the fact that it's you know, challenging to get in to stop you applying, because if you have that passion and the commitment, that's what we're after. You know, it doesn't matter what sort of house you live in or what background you, you come from. We just want the best people to work with children because that's what they deserve. So if you're the best person to work with children, please do apply. Fantastic. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, Becca, how long after interviews are offers made? Um, so we have our first interview date in October and they run right through till around March, depending on how many applications we've had um, in. Although the deadline is the 26th of January, obviously we still need time to interview all the people that have applied up to that date. We will start making offers um, soon after our first interview date, but we won't fill the course until we have um, interviewed everybody who has applied um, before the 26th of January. So some people might hear a bit sooner than others. Some people, you know, it might be um, you know, a bit longer. It, it really just depends. But we just, you know, sort of um, file through through the applications and the interviews and and start trickling out the offers um, al along the way, really. But um, as long as you apply before the 26th of January, um, you will be in with a fair chance um, for a place. And if you were interviewed in October and you 
still haven't heard in January, it doesn't mean that you didn't get a place. Um, so don't panic either. It just means that we haven't got to your um, application yet or, um, you know, we still we can't fill the course. So. Great. Thanks, Becca. Uh, we've got a question about doing paid work while nannying. I just wondered, obviously, um, Claire mentioned about international students not being able to um, work uh, at the moment. Um, Rihanna, what kind of paid work have you been able to do um, as a student during your study so far? Um, so I like working a lot. Um, so I work at the Northern Library, which is six till ten. Once every two weeks, I also do night shifts with a family who's got a disabled boy so I have to make sure he's all right during the night so I do that two times a night each week and then occasional day shifts with them and I am now doing private tutoring teaching Spanish to children on Wednesday evenings. Dan can I just add, add some more there as well um there are the most amazing job opportunities for our students uh, this year, we work with a company uh, who, who places nannies in um, rather nice villas in Greece, for example. And this, this year, I reckon about eight or nine, possibly even ten students went out there for the whole summer and worked in Greece, um, uh, in Crete, I think it was. No, Corfu, I think it was, in Corfu. Um, every year, we have our students come back in September and we ask the question, where have you been? And they just go all over the place to the most wonderful places working with families. So not only are they going to wonderful places, but they're getting paid as well. Now, they, they are working hard. It's not all sitting on the, on the beach building sandcastles. Um, that is some of their work because that's what you do with young children. But, you know, often that they will they, the children be, will be in the room with the student rather than with a family. So, you know, you are working hard, but the most amazing opportunities. And if you come along to Open Day, You'll hear even more about the jobs, not only whilst students are with us, but the, the most amazing jobs that they go on to do after they have completed their programmes with us. Um, are, have a look on the website. We haven't mentioned the salaries, for example, today. Um, I think that's another unwrapped that we do where we talk to you about the different jobs. So do sign up for that one when that comes along. But just as a taster, you know, Within a year of you leaving Norland, you'll be on at least forty thousand um, pounds. That's those are the sorts of jobs right now, and obviously that goes up every year. We have some students within five years who are on. Well, we have a lot of students within five years of graduating who are on sixty or seventy thousand pounds a year. We have jobs in our agency, and our agency only places Norland nannies. We have jobs in there over a hundred thousand pounds a year. Now these are incredible salaries for doing a job that you absolutely love, but it's not easy and it and you will be working hard for that money. But this just gives you an idea of the amazing opportunities for you once you graduate. Also, just one final thing. Sorry, Dan, <laughs> I know I'm grabbing on today. We have actually recently just um, adjusted our timetable so that you come into college later, so you don't start till half past nine and you finish earlier round about half past three or half past four, depending on which day. Um, and, and we've done that so that it enables you to take jobs, uh, dropping off children at school and picking them up after school. Um, our students, I'm sure Maria and M Maria and Rihanna, I don't know why I keep calling you Maria. I think it's because of Rihanna. Sorry, Marie. Marie and Rihanna, I think will confirm that you are in huge demand in Bath and the local area to work with families in our local area to do um, either ad hoc babysitting or regular babysitting or regular school pick up and drop off. So lots of opportunities to work. Thanks, Mandy. You said you were whittling on, but you actually answered one of the next questions about the timetable. So you were psychic. So thank okay. you. <laughs> Um, the next question I've got, I'm, I know we're approaching six o'clock, but we've got a few more to get through. So I'm just going to get through them as quickly as we can. Um, I'm going to aim this one at Claire or Becca. I'll let you fight it out between you who wants it. Um, how recent does the work experience have to be? I've worked as an au pair in America for two and a half years, but since my visa ended, I've been traveling Europe for a year. Is my work experience still valid? I hate to say it, but that's a Becca. <laughs> Sorry, Becca. <laughs> Um, I'm not a, with what re, in what regards does she mean the work experience um is it in terms of do you, I think is it referring to the placement before they arrive at Norland as an international student I think it's to do with that, that they need experience um to be able to come for an interview you need to be able to talk about experience I think it's I think that's what we're talking about 
Oh, okay. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's no um, deadline um, for the experience at all. Um, just any experience. We have applicants, you know, who have worked with brownies. They've been babysitting since they were, you know, quite young. They, they've got young siblings in their family, like a variety of experience. It's, we don't um, actually sort of home in on when you had the experience. It's, it's mainly for your benefit so that you know why you want to work with children turning up to an interview and saying I want to work with children because they're really cute and they're really funny isn't going to um, let us know why it is that you work with children and if you've really worked with children you'll know that sometimes they are cute and funny but um, it's also really really hard <laughs> and it needs to be a lot more than that as to why you want to work with them so um that's why I, I say to, you know, the more experience you have, the better understanding you will have of un knowing why you want to work with them and you'll be able to feel, to feel more confident telling us that. Great, thank you, Becca. Um, another one here just quickly about interviews being online. If you're a UK student, can you have an uh, online interview if you wanted to? We really like to see you face to face if we can. Um, and also, if you haven't been to Norland before, um, it's a great way to actually come here and view the building and see where you would be attending. Um, but, you know, if you if you do live far away and it's not possible for you to get here, then there's always um, a way that we can work it out and we will be try to be as flexible with you as possible. But ultimately, we would rather that you that you came here in person. Next one to you, Mandy, because I know you like this one. Can I bring a car? Should I bring a car? <laughs> I love car questions. Uh, please don't bring a car, is the answer. Bath is terrible to drive in and even worse to park in. And the streets around the college are all um, resident-only parking. And your student accommodation is unlikely to have enough car parking spaces for the number of people living in that house. Um, and every week we get complaints from the lovely residents of Bath about our students parking inconsiderately. And how do they know it's our students? Because you wear a uniform. If you go to one of the other universities in Bath, you can, um, you're, you're kind of anonymous. They don't know whether you're a local worker, uh, a, somebody visiting a family home or uh, a student. But being a Northern student, they know who you are and they know who to phone up to complain. So the answer is, Please do not bring a bar. Uh, a bar. Please do not bring a car. There are plenty. There's plenty of public transport, um, and um, you know, many of our houses, our student houses, are in walking distance from the college. Um, and um, we try to make sure. In fact, I think we do make sure, Becca, Becca, don't we, that every single house we use is on a public bus route, so you you will be able to uh, to to use public transport nice and easily. Yeah, I'd say um, you know a majority, a high majority of our property. Um, student accommodation is within a 20 minute walking distance from um, from Norland and a couple of properties that we have which are the other side of town are um, a very short walk to a bus stop so um, and also you know you're only in um, at, on campus so many weeks of the term and then the other portion of it you're going to be in placement so even if your accommodation is close to Norland there's a good chance you're not going to be close to your um, placement so actually having a bus um, getting a bus pass or using public transport is is the best way really. I see Rihanna's raised a virtual hand. Can I, I'm not arguing. Can I just say though, if you do live far away from Norland and you're planning on going home for holidays and you, it's awkward to get home travel wise, then I do say bring a car. But obviously, if you can leave it where you live, that's probably better off. Um, I find it useful having my car because to get home, it's a six hour car drive or twelve hour and five train changes. So it's um it's your choice basically. But if you are planning on bringing a car, I'd say visit Bath beforehand and scout the area and then decide it there and then. I and realise that you can't park here at Norland. Yeah. So if you've got it, you you will have to find parking. If you're, if you're intending to drive to Norland each day, you're going to really struggle with that. Yeah, I think it's a very fair point, Rihanna. And uh, what I would say is if you are going to bring a car with you, please don't. But if you are, 
please let us know when you um, fill in your forms for accommodation that you, you would like to have um, accommodation with a parking space. Now, obviously, if everybody does that, we're not going to be able to address everything for everybody, but at least it gives us a, um, we can then have a conversation with you about why you need your car and whether we can find you somewhere with a, with a parking space. Great, thank you. Uh, Mandy, just same with you, you mentioned about the additional personal statement just to be sent to Norland. Um, how long should that be? Um, as, uh, well, I was going to say as long as you like, but please don't write a dissertation. <laughs> um, I, it, can, it can be as short or as long as you want, really. Uh, we don't want to restrict you in expressing all the things that I've just said about passion and commitment and, you know, the, the stuff that we can't teach you, that, that you, you need, the enthusiasm, the, the bubbly nature that children really respond well to, you know, that, that sort of thing. We can't, um, we, we don't want to restrict you in expressing that but try to be succinct but um there are there is no word limit if you can try and make it no longer than the normal UCAS statement that would be really helpful but as I say we don't want to really restrict you so if you want to write more than that that's fine great and these are the final three I promise Claire one for you do we have any Canadians currently studying or have there been applications from Canadian uh Canada we had, do we have one, Becca, but they had a British nationality as well, British citizenship. Yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's right. They, mm. they didn't need to apply for a visa, but um, mm. they, they are from Canada. So yes and no, but we'd very much like more. So please apply. We love Canadians and all nationalities. <laughs> um, and these last two will go to uh, Marie and Rihanna. Firstly, one for uh, Rihanna. What bills do you have um, outside of rent? Um, so you've got the gas and electric, water, broadband, and the one-off TV licence if you pay for the yearly one, or obviously you can do it monthly. I tend to pay for the yearly one because it's cheaper. Great. And roughly, do you know how much you'd say that was on top of your rent? Um, so last year, because I've got rent and bills this year, so I'm not really sure what it is this year, but last year it was around £50 between four of us. Can I quickly chime in? Sorry, uh, we do uh, student bills in our house. So we have one company that does all our bills for us and we pay about 85 this year. Great, thank you both. And Marie, how are you examined uh, throughout Nolan? What kind of, how are you assessed in your first year and how will you be assessed going forward? So the really cool thing about Norland is that it's not just essay writing and just the academic writing, the basic thing, because I think Norland realizes it like the most out of all the universities and institutions I've ever gone to, um, that not every student learns the same and not every person has the same strengths. So in our first year, we had, I think, a minimum of four or five different types of assessments. It started with an essay. Um, and then we had a personal presentation, we had group debates or presentations, uh, we had an academic poster, so everyone will be able to show up their different strengths. And it's really great because after, before we start any new type of assessment, we also have a masterclass where a member of staff or a member of the support staff um, will walk us through the process, give us tips, show us how it works. And the great thing about Nolan and being a fairly small colleges that you can always ask for help. So there is staff members, multiple staff members that are only there for our students to help us. Um, and we can just email or pop in and ask questions and everybody's always so happy to help. So there will always be somebody willing to show you again and again um, if, you, if you need that. And um, what we also have is because we do two different things, the diploma and degree, Norland has assessments, they're called holistic assessments, and they allow you to combine both of the degree and diploma work while also combining all the different assessments you did in, in a term. So it's, it's really fun and that's always something different. But the last few times it was making up an activity um, that has a phonics, um, uh, is, is focused on phonics um, and things like that. So it's, it, that's a really cool thing about Norland that everybody gets a chance to show off essentially and um, be able to succeed it's a really nice thing amazing thank you very much marie that is all the time we have and all the questions we had uh, thank you very much for staying with us just a final quick note 
Saturday the 8th of October is our open day. Come and visit us in person. We'd love to see you. All of the panel, uh, Claire, um, Mandy and Becca will be there. And as Rihanna, uh, Rihanna mentioned, she'll be in FNN cooking up a storm. So make sure you pay her a visit as well. If you can't make it, virtual open morning, Saturday the 12th of November. Um, come and uh, book on for that as well. There's only a few spaces left, I should say, for the open day on 8th of October for the presentation. So make sure you get on there quick. Um, email admissions for any other questions that you might have. If you have a question for our students, you can go onto the website and speak to students on the website and they're the best ones to tell you what it's really like studying at Northern. So make sure you take that opportunity. Um, so basically, thank you very much to Mandy, to Becca, to Claire and Marie and Rihanna for your time and also for all of you for joining us and we hope to see you soon, hopefully on the 8th of October. <laughs>